Kelly and welcome to my channel. Hope you are having a wonderful start to 2017. I'm here today to do my most anticipated book releases and I have quite a few written very professionally on flashcards and I think there's over 20 of them. So without further ado, let's get to it. First up, on the 10th of January, we have A.G. Howard's Roseblood. Uh, A.G. Howard also wrote the Splinter Trilogy, which I haven't read, but Roseblood is so up my alley because it's a YA retelling of The Phantom of the Opera, and The Phantom of the Opera was basically my childhood lullaby. The first memory I have of my own voice is me requesting to listen to it, so I am so there on the 10th. Uh, it's once again going to be set in an opera house, which I think is called Roseblood, and it seems that more than one character is going to be wearing a mask, literal or otherwise. Next up, on the 12th of January, we have A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah or Sarah Barnard. This appears to be a YA contemporary about a girl with selective mutism who is assigned, because she has a limited understanding of sign language, to look after a boy who is deaf and it's about finding your voice and communication in general. On the 31st of January we have a book already doing the rounds on YouTube. This is Caraval by Stephanie Garber and it's being hailed as a YA version of The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. It's about two sisters who spend their lives uh, on a tiny little island with their cruel father with the eldest, I believe, dreaming of being able to attend the once-a-year spectacle that is Caraval, which, um, where the audience kind of participates in the events. Then her invitation arrives, she gets her chance, but her sister is taken by the mastermind organiser of Caraval, whose name is Legend. Also on January 31st, we're getting By Your Side by Casey West, this is another YA contemporary about two teenagers who find themselves locked in a library overnight, which I'm pretty sure used to be the basis for a lot of my fantasies. Uh, over the course of the weekend, they find themselves opening up to each other and discovering things about each other that they didn't expect, as you might imagine. And then it's whether their connection can last once they've left the library. Moving on to the 1st of February, we have Unconventional by Maggie Harcourt, which is yet another YA contemporary. I'm worried that I'm not going to get very much read this year, so I'm trying to make things easier for myself with some easier reads so that I don't get too discouraged. Anyway, Unconventional is the epitome of geek culture. It's set around conventions about a girl who is a self-professed convention kid who meets a very arrogant author at one of these conventions and a series of awkward encounters or well, awkward and infuriating encounters ensue. On the 6th of February, although I have found multiple dates depending on where you look, we have a book called The Book Jumper by an author whose name I really can't pronounce. Mechthild, 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 Glazer. Those are your options, I'll put it on the screen, have a go yourself. According to Amazon, this is a younger book aimed at 8 to 12 year olds about a girl whose mother moves them from their home in Germany to an island in Scotland called Stormsay, and there the girl discovers that she can jump into books and interact in fictional worlds and also discovers that things are being stolen from within those stories. This tab here means that I am beyond excited about this next one coming on the 7th of February. This is Winter Song by S.J. Jones. Be still my heart because this is a retelling of Labyrinth, as in glitter everywhere, bog of eternal stench, whiny Jennifer Connolly, David Bowie, god damn you 2016, David Bowie juggling those crystal balls. So 19 year old Liesl is a talented composer whose music is inspired by the mysterious Goblin King, uh, but she has to sort of stow her dreams in order to take care of her family until the goblins take her sister and Liesl must journey to the underground to bargain with the Goblin King and free her. Ah. And slightly confusing dates for this next one, on the 7th of February is the paperback and according to Amazon the 1st of March maybe is the hardback, I don't know, it is Empress of a Thousand Skies by Rhoda Beliza. This is being marketed at fans of The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer, say I, I. 
because it's once again set in space. It's about a princess called Re, who is the... is it Re? Confirmation, her name is Re. She is the crown princess and sole surviving heir, very much alive, even though a former war refugee called Ali, who has become a reality TV star, is being charged with having killed her. On the 9th of February, we have a joint endeavour from authors Sarah Crossan and Brian Conahan. Sarah Crossan wrote one, a book about conjoined twins, which I read last year, and which made me cry on a plane, quite embarrassingly. So I'm looking forward to this. It's the story of two troubled teenagers, one of whom is called Niku and ha is, has emigrated from Romania, and the other is called Jess, who lives in a violent home, and they end up bonding over their painful past. On February 14th, we're getting The Valiant by Leslie Livingston, which is a YA historical novel about a girl who has to earn her place within her father's army following the death of her sister. Her father is a Celtic king, and the Roman armies have invaded Britain. The girl is called Fallon, and before she has the chance to prove herself, she is captured by brigands and sold into a female gladiatorial training school whose patron is none other than her enemy, Julius Caesar. On the 1st of March, we're getting the first book in either a trilogy or series by Trisha Levenseller. The book is called Daughter of the Pirate King. It's about a 17-year-old female pirate captain who allows herself to be captured by an enemy crew in order to seek out a hidden treasure map. She's very clever, so she's not really in any danger from the vicious crew, but she does seem to be at risk from the handsome and rather clever first mate. Blood Rose Rebellion by Rosalind Eves releases on the 28th of March, and it's giving me quite a lot of Ruined by Amy Tintera vibes, because once again, the protagonist is from a family of powerful magic users, but is herself barren to magic. Then she finds out that she has the ability to break spells, which she does so quite embarrassingly at her sister's kind of debutante event, and these events are used to showcase magical skill. So this is embarrassing, and she winds up being exiled to Hungary, where her power may just have the ability to change the world forever. Tab alert! On the 11th of April, we're getting a new book by Mindy McGuinness, whose Female of the Species I'm really looking forward to reading. This one is called Given to the Sea, and if you go on Goodreads, the summary, summary is much longer and more detailed than I'm going to give you here, but the part that actually sold me on it is that there is a girl called Kosa, or Kosa, who is destined to be sacrificed by means of this kind of involuntary spasmodic dance into the ocean in the hope of preventing another giant wave like the one that destroyed the kingdom many years ago. And before she does that, she has to produce an heir. This next one is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, hence the tab, because I love those. It's Hunted by Megan Spooner, and the dates are all over the place for this. Goodreads says 14th of March, Amazon, the hardback is the 20th of April, the paperback is the 1st of April. Who knows, but I'm excited about it nevertheless. It is about a girl called Yiva, whose father is a hunter and loses his fortune, which means that they move to the outskirts of the village. Her father goes missing in the forest one day, and she sets her sights on the last prey she knew that he was tracking, which is the beast. And in doing this, she encounters uh, an enchanted valley, a ruined castle, and a host of fairy tale characters. On the 2nd of May, there is a book which sounds really interesting coming out, and I'm going to use my card because I want to do it justice. It's called Cold Summer by Gwen Cole. It's about a boy called Cale Jackson who is a high school dropout and a time traveller. When he time travels, he goes back to 1945, where he's a sharpshooter in World War II. And when he returns to the modern day, again uncontrollably, he does so with understandable wounds and PTSD, which are just obliterating his chances of a normal life. Then his former girl next door moves back into town and he is reminded of who he used to be and could be again if he could only learn to control his time traveling, especially when the girl reads his name in a historical article listing him as a casualty of war due to a stray bullet. So now he knows that each time he goes back to 1945 could even more so be his last because there's a bullet with his name in it on it in a time that he shouldn't even exist in. 
To say I'm excited about this next one is an understatement. All I've written on my card is OMFG because it, it qualifies for the F. Uh, it is A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Maas. This is the third book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses, what is now I think a six book series. Uh, the first book, A Court of Thorns and Roses, was a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, but it's expanded so far beyond that. And most people agree that the second book, A Court of Mist and Fury, was the best because it has resand all over the place. Um, I just get in my eyeballs. Coming on the 4th of May is Frostblood, book one in the Frostblood Saga by Ellie Blake. This is about a girl who is a fireblood in a world of ruling Frostbloods. Her mother dies protecting her and she is approached by rebel Frostbloods to help kill the rampaging king and she agrees but before she can do anything she is captured and forced to take part in these tournaments, what are they, what were they called? In the King's Tournaments where imprisoned firebloods are pitted against champion frostbloods. I hope I kept track of that all. Now this next one is basically Mulan set in Japan. It's by Renee Adia, the name is Flame in the Mist, coming out on the 18th of May. Uh, it's about a girl called Mariko, who is the daughter of a prominent samurai, and she herself is a talented alchemist, but because she's a female, her fate is out of her hands. She is promised in a political marriage, but on the way to said marriage, uh, her carriage is attacked, and she is almost killed by bandits. She survives. She then, to find out what it was all about, she disguises herself as a boy, infiltrates the bandits. Uh, before long, she is taken to their leader, but they still don't know that she is in fact a girl, so the subterfuge continues. On the 29th of August, we're getting the first in the new DC Icons series. This is Wonder Woman Warbringer by Lee Bardugo. And I think a lot of people felt that Wonder Woman was the best part of Batman vs Superman. And I'm definitely interested in learning more about her origin story. So here she is Diana, princess of the Amazons, desperate to prove herself to her warrior sisters, but jeopardizing it when she rescues a mere mortal who turns out to be none other than the direct descendant of Helen of Troy and thus a war bringer whose legacy I believe may result in the end of the world. Finally, on the 7th of September we have a book that was on my most anticipated releases of 2016 but so far has been pushed back and pushed back and pushed back for over a year. I do think there was a death in the author's family however so that is understandable. I'm just impatient to get my hands on it because I really enjoyed the first one. Whew. This one is called Solutions and Other Problems by Ali Broche, following on from her first book Hyperbole and a Half, which is the same name as her very popular blog, basically a series of vignettes from her life, very funny ones paired with equally funny and quite raw sketches. It's a great read. Please let this year be the year. Now as you can tell, those releases kind of dwindled towards the end of this year because a lot of release dates have not been finalised yet. So there may well be a second part to this most anticipated releases of 2017 when I know more about what is coming. Although honestly this is dangerous enough. Let me know if I've missed anything that you are particularly anticipating down in the boxes below. Let's have a little conversation. Please like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you'd like to see the next one, and thank you so much for watching it. Hope 2017 is treating you well. Bye!